It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman. Join us today to talk about being a grandparent and his book, Being a Grandparent, Just Like Being a Parent, Only Different. I <laughs> love that title. Dr. Ray Grandy, thanks for being here. Hey, Kyle. Good to be with you. Uh, on a scale of horrible to best grandpa in the world, where do you find yourself? Depends who you ask. <laughs> You ask me on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm a 12. There you go. <laughs> you ask the people in my life, I'm about a 4. So I don't know who's, who's ranking you want to take. Maybe we'll split the difference a little bit. We'll call it an 8. Okay. <laughs> Got it. What's, what's your favorite thing about being a grandparent? I don't have to discipline them. Yeah. I can hand them back to their parents. I can say, here you go. I can sit down and watch TV at 8 o'clock at night. And not worry about the bedtime bad times. Actually, to tell you the truth, my wife and I looked at this as we went through the phase of parenthood. That was our phase. Uh My youngest one is now 18. My oldest is 31. Got a couple of grandkids scattered in there. And all we do, I'm going to give a rule to grandparents. I talk about this several places in the book. Uh There is a piece of advice given to mothers and mother-in-laws on their daughter or daughter-in-law's wedding day to make it a successful wedding day. Uh And that piece of advice is sit up, shut up, and wear beige. (laughs) And I think that is great advice for grandparents. (laughs) I can't tell you how many of them have to chew the far end of their tongue off to keep their mouth shut Uh with the way their kids are raising the grandkids, whether it's in the faith or not in the faith whether it's letting them get away with murder, whether it is they think they're too strict, all kinds of opinions, critiques, perhaps sometimes subtle eye rolls come from grandparents. And that is not a good thing in general. If your kids want your advice, here's what you do. You hand them a sheet of paper that you had prepared by your attorney, (laughs) giving you permission to open your mouth, have them sign it, make sure that it's notarized, And then shut your mouth. Okay. (laughs) You got to be real careful. You just truly do. And wear beige. And wear beige. And guys don't even know what beige is. You know that? (laughs) Women do. Women women know the difference between eggshell white and linen white and off white. Guys, we know red, blue, and purple. Right. And beige is somewhere in the middle, maybe. I don't have any idea. My wife tells me what beige is. She says, wear that. It's beige. Okay. So it used to be white, but I've worn it too long. The the way you're talking, <laughs> sorry, the way that you're talking about this is that grandparenting is very different from being a parent. But in the title, being a grandparent, just like being a parent, only different. In what ways are they similar? They're similar in the sense, and then this is, I think, the upside for most grandparents. Generally, you got more flexibility in your schedule. You go to the kids' games. You don't have to juggle a work schedule. You're maybe not working anymore. You have a little more flexible income, which is dangerous because with that income, you can overdo it, which is not a good thing. And oftentimes that brings you into conflict with the parents. Uh You are not in a role of disciplinarian. That's probably the biggest thing. You're not the one that sets the rules and the limits and risks the clashes and the friction that can come with that. Your grandma, your grandpa... You can just spend the time. You can enjoy. One grandma told me it this way. She said she views her grandson's visits as headlights and taillights. Headlights, they're showing up. This is great. She loves it. We have fun. Taillights, good. I'm exhausted. They're going home. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of how she summarized it. (laughs) So what should grandparents be looking out for as far as trying too hard or being too nice or being too involved? What are, what are some of the signs that maybe they're overdoing it a little bit? The key is, Kyle, mm-hmm. in most situations, most circumstances, whether you agree or disagree with the parent, it is their child. They are raising their child as they see fit. No matter how misguided, how lax, how permissive, how strict, how whatever you think it is. Now, many grandparents will say to me, yeah, but there's no religion. They have no religion. They've abandoned everything we've taught them. I want the baby to be baptized. I want to bring them Bible books. They won't let me. Uh 
That's the key. If the parent is sending you clear signals, mom, dad, don't do that. That's not where we are. Don't. Then you have no choice but to just let it rest. You can't force it. Kyle, I'm going to tell you one of the more tragic situations now is where the grandparents are no longer allowed contact with the grandkids. And most of the time, I'll tell you, most of the time that happens because the adult kids are upset at the grandparents for being too pushy with their opinions, too inclusive, too much trying to guide it a certain way, giving too many critiques, maybe an eye roll. And sometimes that can create real distance and you'll find yourself being shut out as a grandparent and you don't want to risk that. You can never influence those kids if you don't have a relationship and you don't want to corrode that relationship. I say it all the time. You got to watch for that. We're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi. You can hear him here on Redeemer Radio weekdays at 1 p.m. Talking about being a grandparent, just like being a parent, only different. And what would be the role of the grandparent if it's not to be the disciplinarian and to set the rules and, and influence their children on how they should be parents? What is the role? Grandparents have, going back to discipline for a bit, Kyle, mm-hmm. they have discipline leverage depending upon the situation. Let's say the grandparent has asked to babysit. Okay. Is the baby sitting in grandparents' house? Well, if it's in grandparents' house, it's very legitimate to be under grandparents' conditions. Uh Now, perhaps there is some respect given to the parents. For example, if the parents say, we don't spank, well, okay, then the grandparent won't spank even in her house. Uh But in terms of discipline, using the corner or whatever the grandparent is going to do, they have the right to have those conditions. And if they can't have those conditions, then they've got to decide whether they can babysit. If they're at the parents' house and the parents are there, then it's up to the parents to discipline, and hopefully they will. But if they don't, the only thing the grandparent can really do is step in if the child is doing something to them. You know, if the kid's being disrespectful to grandpa or the kid is throwing a fit on grandpa, something along those lines, then the grandparent can say, okay, I'm not, this is what I'm going to do about this. I'm not going to allow this. Now, where can the grandparents' role be different? I think the grandparents naturally have a more relaxed role. They do. Mm-hmm. They are able to pick up the little kid and take him to preschool on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know, and they can drive to school together for a half an hour and talk. Mm-hmm. They're a relaxed role. They have a role that can maybe give a little more goodies, but you've got to watch. Sometimes the parents get ill at ease with how much the grandparents do too much with the goodies. Yeah. Things I really, really warn grandparents about. If you look at the way your son or daughter is raising your grandkid or grandkids, and you think they're too strict, they're not letting them watch things you think would be perfectly okay to watch, they're not letting them have a video game that you see no problem with that video game. They don't have a television in their bedroom, so you get them a television in their bedroom. You have to respect the parents' wishes regarding material stuff and gifts. You can't undercut the parent. You can't have the kid at your house saying, okay, well, we're going to watch this. I think this is perfectly fine. I know your mom doesn't think so, but just keep this between you and I, okay? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You lose. You play something like that. I've even advised parents not to let their kid go over grandpa or grandma's house unsupervised if they know that grandma or grandpa is going to undercut their parenting. Huh. I've even said, well, you, you, they put you in a box. You can't let your child go over there unsupervised. You can go over there with them. You can't let them stay overnight there. You can't let them go because they simply have made it clear to you they will not respect your wishes. But what if he bought him a video game? I don't want him to have that video game, but she bought it for him. You are not obliged to accept any gift that you don't think is good for your kid's welfare. Hmm. You're not. Part of it is grandparents are a little out of touch. I know I am (laughs) with the technology and with what's available. And we tend to think things are a little more innocent than they are. Hmm. The culture is galloping ahead of us immorally in ways that maybe we don't quite wrap our heads around yet. So I see that there's no problem with giving him a TV for his bedroom. I mean, I watched Andy Griffith when I was a kid. And I watched cartoons. What's the problem with a TV in a bedroom? 
Yeah, but if you're not aware of the sludge that is now on there, especially with cable channels, then you're clueless. So yeah. oftentimes what we grandparents think is harmless is not. Yeah. What are some of the other issues or challenges that grandparents might face that you address in the book? I talk about grandkids out of wedlock. Hmm. Uh, approximately 40% of kids are now born out of wedlock. Well, there's a pretty good chance uh, one of your grandkids is going to be born out of wedlock. In the millennial age, age 18 to 34, more children are now born out of wedlock than are born in wedlock. So the grandparent may find herself, himself, in a position of trying to grandparent this child, accept this child, love this child, in complicated circumstances. And I always advise him, you do your very, very best to show love to that child as best you can. And to show love to the illegitimate parent, if you will, to use that term, because Otherwise, you're just going to create distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't want them to think I condone this. I don't want, they're living together. They're living together and they're raising that child. And I just don't, I I can't go over there and visit because they'll think I think this is perfectly fine. No. They know your opinion. They know your morals. They know how they were raised. They know where you stand. Because you're showing them love and care and concern doesn't mean you're clapping your hands and saying, oh, goody. In wedlock, out of wedlock, no big difference to me, celebrate. You're not doing that. And if they choose to interpret it that way, well, that's how they choose to interpret it. Yeah. Another situation, Kyle, is grandparents raising grandkids. Mm -hmm. Highest percentage now than has ever been. Mm -hmm. That grandparents are stepping in and picking up the pieces. And I always tell grandparents, if you're in a situation like that, the first guideline is you are a parent first and then a grandparent. Now, because you are, in fact, raising the child, you have all the legitimacy, all the leverage, all of the supervision, all of the conditions of a parent. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, the fact that you're 67 years old doesn't matter. You're raising that Mm six-year-old. That's the way it is. The book is really a combination, Kyle, of, of the upside and the challenging side of being a grandparent. Yeah. Well, where can we send people to get a copy of it and uh, to follow what you've been up to? My mother's basement. There, uh-huh. It's a million seller. Uh-huh. There's a million in my mother's <laughs> cellar. Uh, <laughs> actually, if you go to my website, drray.com, or my Facebook page, the books are all signed. So any, or, any book you order through uh, my website will be signed. And there's a whole bunch of other books there. I think my grandparenting book is book number 14 or something like that. Yeah. I've just I've discovered this, the, the secret, Kyle, to writing a lot of books, and that is you can't worry about them being very good because okay. that then slows you down. You know what I mean? If you start worrying about quality, it's really going to slow you down. Gotcha. That's good. <laughs> good good tip. What about good strategy? Huh? Can you do the thing, same thing with parenting? Just go for quantity rather than quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of okay. like you know, hey, if you're a ball player and you're batting 300, you're Hall of Fame. Come on. Good. I like it. All right. Well, thank you so much. Again, the book is called Being a Grandparent, Just Like Being a Parent, Only Different. Dr. Ray Grandy, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. Kyle, thank you.